Welcome to a new season of Change Up Chatter. I'm Lily Herrera. And I'm Colin Eccles. Lily, I have to say there are not many times of the year that I get as excited as I am right now. It's finally time for some postseason Major League Baseball. I could not have said it better myself. And with Change Up Chatter starting back up again, so as our tradition of wearing our baseball jerseys. So, of course, as always, I have the Dodger one on. But, Colin, you know the A's are not in the postseason. I understand that, but being that this year ended 57 years of the Coliseum in Oakland, being home for the franchise, it only feels right to represent one of the more iconic team names throughout the entire playoffs. That's fair, and I do like the representation for a team that isn't in the postseason. But we have some games to discuss. Yesterday, the New York Mets and the Braves played out a playoff berth, a siding doubleheader. You know, in my recent memory, I'm not sure that I've witnessed a pair of games that was more important for setting the wild card bracket. Both of those games being shifted from the end of last week to yesterday because of Hurricane Helene, it made things even crazier. There were one of three outcomes. If the Mets swept the doubleheader, the Braves were out and the Arizona Diamondbacks would be sitting in a wild card spot. If the Braves swept, New York is out and Arizona is in. In this case, option three came into play. The two teams split the series, sending the D-backs home for the offseason. If anyone was looking for an exciting midday game to go out and watch, then game one of the doubleheader was definitely it. New York absolutely stole the game right out from under Atlanta. The Braves got off to a big start taking advantage of the long ball. Ozzie Albies put the first two runs on the board in the bottom of the third with a 392-footer to left field. Then in the sixth, Ramon Laureano added another run with a solo shot 411 feet over the center field wall to put the Mets back 3-0. Both frames of the eighth is where things really got exciting. New York strung together six hits in the top of the inning, including a 405-foot two-run bomb from Brandon Nemo. To boost the Mets to a 6-3 lead over Atlanta, then the Braves respond in the bottom of the half and put together four runs to retake the lead 7-6. Thanks to Albies, double with bases juiced. Now, I thought for sure the Braves had game one checked off in the win column, but one of the hottest hitters in baseball, Francisco Lindor, had other ideas. After a single from Sterling Marte to start the top of the ninth, Lindor homered to put New York back in front 8-7. Braves had no answer in the bottom of the inning, and Lindor finished the game 2-5 for five at the dish with three RBIs. Edwin Diaz got the win for New York. Pierce Johnson adds a loss to his record for the Braves. Such a back and forth first game for the series, and I can tell you that the second game was not nearly as exciting as the first. The Braves start off on top in the bottom of the second with Gio Urshela pushing a fly ball out to left field for a single and allowing Jorge Soler to cross the plate and putting them up 1-0. And like I said, not much action for most of the game, but in the bottom of the seventh, with two outs and runners in scoring position, Marcelo Ozuna comes up big with a single line drive to left to score Sean Murphy and Ozzie Albius to keep the Braves ahead and win the game 3-0. Daisbel Hernandez gets the win for Atlanta. Rizel Iglesias gets the save. Joey Lucchesi took the loss for the Mets and with it only being his second loss for the 2024 regular season. And with that, the 2024 MLB postseason bracket is set. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for the week and let's start with the American League. Now, as much as it pains me as a Red Sox fan, the New York Yankees clinched the first overall seed and the Cleveland Guardians secured the number two seed. Both teams get first round buys. The American League wildcard round gets started today. Game one of the Detroit Tigers and the Houston Astros kicks off the entire postseason in Houston. First pitch is scheduled for 232 sharp on ABC. Then the Kansas City Royals travel to Baltimore to play the Orioles. First pitch is at Camden Yard is set for 408 on ESPN2. Game two of the Tiger Strohs series is Wednesday, October 2nd. The Strohs keep home field advantage. The first pitch is at 232 again on ABC. Action continues at 4.38 with the Royals and the Orioles, this time on ESPN. And if necessary, both series will continue Thursday, October 3rd. Detroit-Houston will be at 2.32 again on ABC. Kansas City-Baltimore at 4.08 on ESPN. Now, let's take a look at the National League bracket. Now, Colin, I'm sorry about your Red Sox, but I can't say the same about my team. The Los Angeles Dodgers clinched the NL West title over the Padres to put themselves at the one seed, and the Philadelphia Phillies secured the two seed. Both also get first-round buys. The National League wildcard round is underway with Game 1 for the New York Mets, kicking it off against the Milwaukee Brewers at 5.30. The Brewers will have the home field advantage. Then the Atlanta Braves will travel to the West Coast to face off against the San Diego Padres. First pitch is set for 8.30 p.m. on ESPN. Game 2 of the Mets-Brewers series is Wednesday, October 2nd, with the Brewers keeping their home field advantage. First pitch is set for 7.38 p.m. on ESPN again. The Braves-Padres action continues in the West with their Game 2 kicking off at 8.38 p.m. now on ESPN2. 
And similar to the American League, if necessary, the series will continue into Thursday. Atlanta-San Diego will be at 7.08 p.m. on ESPN, and New York-Milwaukee will be at 8.38 p.m. on ESPN2. With the full wild card schedule laid out, I think that the only thing left to do is go over our picks for the World Series and take a look at some players to watch throughout the postseason. Now, my picks might be slightly biased, but I promise they are worth it. I'm really excited to see the Dodgers play in this postseason. In the regular season, their bats were on fire and almost impossible to stop. And now I know they don't have the best record in the playoffs, but they will always be my pick to win the whole thing. But a close second would definitely have to be the Phillies. In terms of a front-end talent, there aren't many teams that can compete with the Phillies outside of the Dodgers and maybe the Yankees. The Phillies have one of the best rosters in the MLB. Now, in terms of a player to watch out for, that would have to be Shohei Otani. I mean, he really is a once-in-a-lifetime athlete. He is the only MLB player to ever be a part of the 50-50 club, and he has surpassed it going into the playoffs with 54 home runs and 59 stolen bases. He is definitely going to be a fun player to watch in this postseason. I couldn't agree more, and I think it's going to be a crazy postseason overall, and I think some of the favorites to win the World Series – are going to fall a little bit short of expectations. Sorry, Dodgers. I don't think they get it done this year. <laughs> My picks are going to be the Baltimore Orioles and the Philadelphia Phillies. The O's are super young, really, really fun to watch. And, I mean, the Phillies, their roster – is super deep. They've got more than just a couple of sluggers in that lineup, and my players have come from those two teams as well. Adley Rutschman from Baltimore, young stud behind the dish, and he's got a big bat as well. And, of course, Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber from the Phillies. All three of those guys are going to be super, super electrifying to watch during the postseason. Colin, we have a great postseason ahead of us, and I'm always excited to get this show up and running again this year. Me too. And like I said, this is one of my favorite times of the year. I'm excited for some of the new content as well that we'll be bringing to the show. We will be back next week with updates for the Division Series and a look at people's picks for the World Series. We'll see you next week for more Change Up Chatter.